Welcome to the Accidental Experts Podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Hamilton. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and a child and family therapist. I have been in practice for over 15 years, and I'm also a mom of four. So I know the challenges both professionally and personally. I'm so glad that you're here today to grow your parenting toolbox. Please come as you are and be ready to learn. My goal is to make you the accidental expert so that you can raise healthy humans. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm so glad you're with us today. I am so excited to have Slaysha Patel back today. She is going to be talking to us about how to teach our daughters about self-love, which is such an important thing. I know that I am trying to raise girls that love themselves and respect themselves and demand that they are also respected. So with that, let's get to Slaysha. Thank you for having me again. I'm so yes, excited. I am so excited you're here. So today we're going to talk about a little bit of a different topic. We're going to talk about teaching our teenage daughters um, how to love themselves. And so I'm so excited about this topic because it is so important. So thank you for joining us. Tell, tell me, what do you think self-love is? Let's define this before we get started. Yeah, I love that. Um, so I, we touched a little bit about it in our first conversation about like what beauty is. Beauty to me in 2024 is really self-love and, and self-love to me, I think is, is about, uh, sorry, excuse me, is about the journey. It's, it's really about loving that foundation that you've been given in this life and like falling in love with the process of like growth and potential and understanding that you're not going to be the same person in a couple of years that you were a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And falling in love with just being accepting of who you are in that moment and where you're headed. Yeah, I love that. A lot that. of times we expect perfection and we want to accept like we self-love in a way. Like sometimes it's like, I love myself today. You may not love yourself today. That's okay. But you're on this journey, you're on this path and you're, you're kind of making progress in baby mm -hmm. steps. And I think that in itself is really beautiful. I think like as somebody that struggled mentally, like, I felt like I had to like love myself today. And if I don't love myself today, then how can I expect somebody else to love me? That's just not the case. Yeah. And none of us are perfect and we're all humans, right? We're all evolving every day, exactly to your point. And I think sometimes it's about like, not if we're not feeling in a place where we can love our whole selves, like finding something that we love about ourselves. Yeah. Right. Or something where it's like, oh, I love this picture of myself or I love that I'm growing or I love that I have an open mind or I love that I'm accepting like it can be qualities about ourselves, too. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Like maybe you're a really good listener. Yeah. Maybe like you have really great style and like fashion sense and you're like you can help your mom find something that she wants to wear. Like yeah. anything it is about you that that you love about yourself, that one little thing can really make all the difference. Yeah. And, and the hope is that we're going to find lots and lots of things that we love. Like, like the hope is that on this journey that we're able to like fully embrace ourselves and be at that place. But it's hard, even as somebody who, like, I think I waver in that sometimes where it's like, I feel really great today. And then I might do something and feel like really upset about how I handled something or embarrassed that I did something or feel like something didn't go right. And then I, and then I can be hard on myself about that. Um, and I think sometimes we also don't realize that like no one else is as hard on us as we are on ourselves. Oh, completely. I, every new year's for the last like five years, my new year's resolution is like, be a better friend. And so like going back to people that like, you know, I haven't talked to in a while more frequently and like really keeping up with people more, um, especially if they don't live in the same city and you don't see them frequently. Um, and, but the best part about those friends is that they don't mind. Like, they're just like, I know that when we talk again, we'll pick up right where we left off and it'll be the same as how things were when we were kids, but I still feel bad. I'm still hard on myself for that, which is why it continues to be something that I'm every new year's eve like i'm like that's what's going to be my new year's resolution yeah yeah and i can never succeed because it's one of those things that's like kind of an ongoing process you have to you know keeping up with friendships is not like a one time thing you don't contact them once it's like you really have to keep going yeah yeah it yeah. requires a lot of us yeah so mm -hmm. as people i said <clears throat> we're all on this journey of self love what do you think gets in the way of self love yeah, I think that there's there's a lot of things that can get in the way of self-love. I think one is is expecting that, you know, being fully content at any given moment. And we, we just can't be fully content, but we want to be fully content. And it's just not easy to be 
satisfied in that. It's also not easy to accept a journey and accept a process because I think like we're throwing ourselves curveballs every day. So this makes it an extreme sport and it's not something that's easy. It's something that you constantly have to work out. It's not always going to be effortless. And even for the people that you think it's effortless, it's not. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Like that's what gets in the way is like, you might be impatient with that journey. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think we also sometimes have our barometer or like this pulse of what is acceptable or should be outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not yeah. self-determined. It's determined by somebody else. Like we're supposed to be wearing these clothes or supposed to be having this um, grade or supposed to be having these relationships. I have a lot of teens in my practice who will be like, I haven't even had my first kiss yet. And it's like, that is okay. Yeah. That's okay. Totally. That is totally fine. Like to me, that's fantastic because it means that you are waiting to meet somebody. Yeah. But it also doesn't mean that kissing somebody already and being in high school is not okay. That's also okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's following and like what's inside of you that creates peace. I think, right. This like calmness Mm -hmm. of like, when I wear this outfit, I feel really good. Right. And I have a calmness, but if I wore like a crop top, I would be anxious as all get out. Like (laughs) it would make me like, I would be like, I pull down the shirt, pull down the shirt. It's too small. It's too small. Right. Like I couldn't handle that. And so like, sometimes these trends that come out and they're not moms, maybe are not supposed to be wearing crop tops. I don't know, but, um, but I, I see these teenage girls, especially wearing crop tops and I'm like, they look adorable, like amazing. Right. Like whatever size they are. Like, I just love that they love that as long as they're loving it. Right. Like if they feel good, then it's like, that's awesome. But it's like, I don't want to wear something that does not make me look good because then I'm going to feel self-conscious and like pulling on my skirt or whatever it is. Right. Or like looking in the mirror to see if my makeup looks good because it's something that doesn't feel comfortable for me. So maybe it's about like finding that place of like being at peace, like yes, just feeling good about yourself. Yeah. Actually, it's so funny that you used crop tops as an example, because this came up at five o'clock this morning when my my husband's grandma, who's from India, just left. She was just visiting us for the weekend. And she left this morning on her early morning flight at JFK with um, with a traditional Indian outfit. And, you know, what's, what's stylish in India and what's appropriate um, is actually the complete opposite of here. So over there, like, crop tops are a regular attire every single day. And it has been for you know, generations and generations. So she left with like a small itty bitty crop top and her like belly button showing and like a low rise, like maxi, you know, skirt essentially. Um, and it was five o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh my God, I could never. <laughs> but she was feeling great. She felt like she was in a conservative, very like modest look, which which makes sense. That's the culture that she comes from. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can totally relate to to that. Yeah. I mean, it's funny how different cultures find, I mean, like we talked about in the last episode, different things, beautiful. And so different things are the desirable parts. And, and I think, you know, we could spend a whole episode talking about all the different things, the varieties, but it's like finding your vibe. Yes. Yeah. Finding that for yourself. And it's okay for it to be many, many different vibes. Like some days I wake up and I'm like, I want to wear an old rock band tee and kind of have that like grunge makeup look. And maybe a little, like, a few leather accents and some, like, silver kind of chain jewelry. And then maybe the next day I'm in my cowboy boots and, like, a cute pair of shorts and, like, a white blouse. And and that's okay. It's okay for me then the next day to, like, want to wear something tweed and, like, maybe a little bit more professional reading. It's okay to have many vibes. You can find yourself within all of those. But just really channeling what it is that you like in all of those forms is is really special. And that's where it's at. Yeah. So we kind of covered this, but I wanted to talk about how loving ourselves is way more than just about beauty and Um, is also about other areas. So what should we be encouraging our girls to focus on about themselves? This is one of those moments where I'm going to have a slightly controversial take on it just because of like the, the world that I live in on my like, you know, work side, like just being a professional model. I think it's like growing up, I also did hear this a lot, like let's focus almost only on inwards. And so it's like, you put all these, like this internal pressure on yourself to like 
be really smart, be a really good friend, you know, do really well in all your extracurriculars and your sports and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, I, I think like I focused a lot on inward and almost essentially avoided the outward um, because I felt like, okay, what's on the outside maybe doesn't matter as much um, because like I've been told so many times to focus inward. I feel that like, it's actually more about like a, that perfect balance of inward and outward. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what you were getting at too earlier is like, you know, it's important to feel just a sense of peace in that. And I think that all the girls that are around my age that I tend to model very frequently with and that I see very often, um, some of the things is like, you know, our, our jobs are based so specifically on like what we look like and how we're a fit for that job. It's kind of like in an acting role, like I'd probably never be cast as like Annie. Cause I don't, I'm not a young girl with short, like with red hair, you know, like that's just mm -hmm. not what I look like. Yes. So I think like a lot of like my friends in this space haven't had enough dialogue about outward appearances either. Mm -hmm. And so like, when it comes to like, Oh, you're not a fit they maybe don't give you feedback or the feedback is like, I don't like your eyebrows. Like that's so random. Like I've never once thought about my eyebrows, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and suddenly somebody's telling you that's the reason you didn't get a job. It can be really mentally taxing if you haven't prepared yourself for finding that peace on, on both levels. So I think like one of the things that we could be, you know, working on is, you know, just mental peace and mental toughness in the sense of like really just embracing who you are at every age and every stage is really, really important. And I think like when you're a teen, you're going through a lot of growth in a lot of different ways and it's all kind of happening at the same time and it's incredibly overwhelming. Um, and so just, you know, like I think as, as parents too, parents can also be supportive in that process of being like, how do you feel? And I want you to know that like what maybe you're insecure with is what I'm like really excited about for you. Like this is going to be awesome. Yeah. I mean, often in my practice, I have this too, where it's like, the qualities of a younger person are a great adult skill, right? So like somebody who is maybe, um, we'll say bossy, right? Like has more ideas and is very direct about them, makes them a great adult leader, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's also important to have have the balance, right. Of listening to other people's ideas sometimes too. But I think that strong internal direction is so great. Yeah. And, and so it's like, like a vision. They're, exactly. they're that for a reason. Yeah. So it's like not uh, eliminating that piece, but more supporting whatever part is needing to be supported. So if it's like, let's also listen to other people's ideas or to be more flexible in that or to take turns, right? Like those are, are reasonable things, right? But mm -hmm. it's also like, you don't want to take that away to be a strong leader. But I think in the teen years, it's also really awkward, right? Like you have so much physical development happening. Um, especially for girls, like externally, we're having like breasts and, you know, we're getting taller and sometimes we tend to gain weight before we get taller and that can be awkward, yes. right? So like yeah. the look, and then it's like, you're, you're just like your whole body is growing and then, and your brain, right. And, and yeah. then internally we're like navigating the social dynamics and advocating for ourselves and educationally and managing our time. And there's so many demands Mm -hmm. on our teens and to be thinking as parents to like, what is making them feel good and what's making them feel supported. And instead of telling them what they should or shouldn't be doing, like m helping them to become good adults by saying like, how are you feeling about this? Or you said this thing about this friend and whatever that was. And how are you feeling about that now? Did you guys yeah. resolve that? Because I think um, I once had, um, a teen tell me that her mom had said this. And I love this line is that as a mom, you only know, or a dad, you only know what your kid tells you. And a lot oh, of times yes. we only tell the things when things are not going well. And so then the, the perspective that a parent might have on like a relationship or a teacher or how you feel about yourself or a sport or whatever it is is the negative times. Cause that's, that's when we tend to bring it up, not when things are going really well. And so I thought that was such a good perspective. And so I think as parents, we can kind of take that piece away to think like, oh, this may be a limited perspective or like, what else do I need to know about this? Or like, how often is this like the way you're feeling? So if you're feeling bad about yourself, like, is this a really big 
deal? Like, is this something big mm-hmm. or is this like today? Are you having a bad hair day today? Is this, or is this how you're feeling all the time to yeah. kind of understand this journey of, of self-love and understanding where our teens are at in terms of like getting a better perspective to understand, is this just like a snapshot or is this like really the whole picture? What would you say to a teen that maybe isn't ready or willing to share that with a parent? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I think, I think the thing that I would say, write a journal, like I would directly to the teen, I would say like, let's write it down to somebody, right? Like let's, even if it's just to yourself to reflect on, because I think, as you said, we're growing right Mm -hmm. all of the time. And so the problem that we feel today may not be the problem that we have tomorrow or next week or next month. And I know that like, and when I go back and read my journals that I had, I'm like, oh my gosh, wow, how far I have come right from there. But I remember feeling like, whatever I wrote. Cause I'm, I am a journaler when things are bad, right? Like I, it to write oh, yeah. when I, things are good is so hard for me. I wish I had that um, skill. Um, but it just doesn't seem important at that time, right? I'm doing a live in life. And so, but to go back and, and read those things, I'm like, wow, I was in the trenches, but it got, it felt good yeah. to just write it down. So I think my first advice to that teen would be write it down, right? Mm-hmm. Put it somewhere so that you can express it. Cause if we hold it in, It's only going to create more negativity, right? But I think, you know, opening up the conversation and sometimes I suggest to parents, but Mm -hmm. also to teens to let um, other people know what the purpose of our conversation is. So Mm -hmm. if we're going, if I'm going to my mom and I want to tell her about something, but like my mom always wants to solve problems and I don't want her to solve problems, (laughs) then I have to say, Hey mom, this is a listening conversation. I don't want you to solve anything here. I just need you to listen to me. And then if I change my mind, I can say, Hey, I changed my mind. What do you think? Right. Yeah. But I might also just need her to say like, Oh gosh, that's really hard. Or like, that sounds really difficult. Or what are you going to you know, do like, or like, I love you or I'm here for you. And then that's good. So sometimes it's also as the teen defining what you want, the purpose of the conversation. And then if, you know, my mom says, well, I, you shouldn't do that. And I could be like, Hey, remember listening conversation. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and I think parents tend to be receptive to that, but um, if they're not, I mean, it's maybe talking about a time, talking about the situation at a time where it's not a time you want to talk about something like, Hey, in the future, I'd like to be able to talk to you about these things. But the reason why I feel apprehensive sometimes is because I know that you're going to get mad. I feel like you're going to get mad at me, yeah. or I think you're going to lecture me, or I, I think you're going to not approve of what I'm doing, mm-hmm. or I'm afraid of what you might say. And, and so could we do it like this? and see what your parent says. I think, you know, if that that was a situation where that parent just cannot do it, finding like another relative or a friend's parent, like some other, I think having an adult perspective is so important because Mm -hmm. we've been through a lot and, and we do have a different perspective than being a teen and in it. And I feel that way too, even about my life. Like I have a um, parent um, like grandparents that have raised kids many years ago that sometimes I'll be like, okay, I have a thing. I just need you to like, tell me yeah. what would you do in this situation? Or I just need to explain this to you and then like move on. Cause I can solve it, but I just need to like complain about this for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's good for all of us to have somebody who's more experienced or has gone through something as somebody who's supporting our journey. So that. <laughs> That's, that's so valuable also in like every aspect, right? Like in any human relationship, like even if it's like a new boyfriend or something that, you know, you found a cute guy in your sophomore year of high school and you're like, you know, I kind of want to explore this in a more like relationship type setting, like just being really transparent and open and honest about what kind of conversation that you want to have before you get into it, I think can prevent conflict and allow for more like growth just within that relationship itself. I think that's such a powerful tool, especially to have early on. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, like you said, it's it's valuable in all relationships. Like even with my husband, like we'll have yeah. conversations and I'm like, hey, can I clarify what you would like me to do in this? Because sometimes yeah. he does just want me to listen and sometimes he does want me to help him solve it. And that way he feels validated or heard from yeah. whatever my role is and vice versa. Right. So yeah, I think it oh, definitely right. is universally true, but my husband and I now have been together for 15 years. We met in, in high school. We were, you know, 15 and 16. Um, so we've been together for quite some time and we got to the point where like, we, we started being really like open and honest with each other about how the other one is like going to react. So I'd say something like, you know, I am afraid what you're going to think of me when I say this. And so I preface things like that. And I feel like that allowed us to like grow 
really well and like increase the pace of our like maturity a little bit, just because we were willing to be brave enough to just even put that introductory phrase out there. Mm-hmm. And so he knew to approach with, with caution to like, let me speak a little bit first before kind of reacting to it. So I think like it, it really is like such a valuable skill at all yeah. ages. Yeah. And, and in parenting, like that thing, when our, if our teens or our kids say something like, I want to tell you something, but I'm scared. Right. Yeah. To that helps us. Cause sometimes, you know, when we're having conversations with our kids, it's like, you're in the hustle of life or even our yeah. partners, right. Anybody, but you're in the hustle of life. Yeah. And, and, you know, if somebody tells you something, you're like, okay, yeah, that's fine. And they, that's not what they were wanting from us. Mm-hmm. Then we've kind of dismissed and might be shutting doors that we don't realize because they actually needed to have a conversation about this. So clarifying and also being able to say like, as a parent, like if your kid brings something to you and say like, this is really important to me, but I am in the middle of making dinner right now. Would it be okay if we talked about this after dinner so that I can like look at you and pay attention to you or is this something that I need to stop dinner there have been times where I've stopped dinner and I've been like okay we're ordering out right or we're eating leftovers or cereals for breakfast because something has come up that has been so important and that's hard it's hard for me as a parent because I was never taught that to like to validate somebody so much that you stop what you're doing to really listen through the whole thing instead of being like, I ha- I got to go, right? Like, yeah, I, like I have to leave this. Yeah. Yes. Right. But I it's like that. the people in front of us are the most important people, right? Like our family, our kids, our spouses, our, you know, friends, right? Like whatever it is, like those relationships that are supporting us in this journey are the most important. So stopping for that, but I, that's something I'm, I'm still working on too. So. Oh, I love that. It's it's a whole new aspect of self-love. It's saying that like, be brave enough to share what you're feeling in that moment to who you're talking to. Yeah. 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 So much healing and so much like love for you, right? Mm-hmm. From the other person can come right. to through those moments as well. So what do you think, we're going to shift a little bit, but what do you yes. think uh, parents need to be aware of when parenting their daughters? We've kind of talked about this, but like, what do you think they need to be aware of in, in this journey of raising strong girls, raising think, strong women. It's exactly what you said. It's that we don't know unless, the, unless they tell us something. And so it's like trying to learn and be aware of your children's environments. Mm-hmm. And I think that your child's environment has, is such an enabler to your child's day-to-day happiness and confidence and like growth with their peers. And so I think that like, for example, like a hair removal is a big one. Like your child may be ready for hair removal before you're ready for your child to have hair removal, mm-hmm. but they might be ready to shave their legs or like, I don't know, get, I, for me, it was like, I wanted to get contacts instead of glasses. Like I was ready. I felt like, you know, I'm mature enough to handle this and like take care of my contact lenses and like you know, take care of my eyes and take them out before I go to sleep. Like I was like, I'm ready. I want this. But Mm -hmm. my doctor with my, my contact and glasses thing didn't think I was old enough for it. And then by the time you're like 14 years old and you're like, can I please, 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 please have contacts now? Everyone else in my group does, you know, and even with shaving my legs, like my mom was like, I just feel like you're, you're so young. Like I didn't start shaving until a certain age, but things develop differently. So your child's environment may just be completely different than what you grew up with. And so just being really aware of like what their situation is, what the ecosystem really looks like. Cause knowing that like, although you have a lot of experience, like their environment is completely different than yours, even if they're at the same exact school that you went to when you grew up. Sure. Well, and I think it's also getting curious about why, right? So if, if your fifth grader is like, I want to shave my legs and you're like, whoa, Mm -hmm. no, then (laughs) it's, it's like, okay, so stop and, and talk about it. Right. And have, a conversation to understand more about it. Yeah, but so I think, just no. yeah, right. Because sometimes, yes, we need to say no, right? Like that's, uh, yeah, that's sometimes not, it's not okay. Like, no, you cannot have a nose job at 12 years old. Like that's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like you're still, you're still developing and like yeah, your face is changing need, every day. Yes. Right. And, and helping them to also understand, like, can I talk to you about my concerns about mm-hmm. this? Right. So it's yeah. like, you know, cause shaving your legs sounds good, but I hate doing it right at 39 oh, years old. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. Actually yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, it, but it's like one of those things that's such a privilege when you're young. Right. But yeah. it's like, but also talking about that process with them to make sure that they're ready for that and whatever it is. Right. So I think that curiosity about what's motivating them is an important piece. So why do you think it's important for us to model self-love 
for ourselves in front of our children. Oh yeah. That's huge. I think like I was, I, I think as a kid, you're so aware and you're really paying attention to all the little notes. Like they say that like when you're really, really young, like you see how your parents are chewing and that's how you learn to chew. It's like those little things. And so like, I was always really aware of what my mom's insecurities were about herself visually. And then I trained myself to think, okay, I don't want those features. How can I prevent those features as I get older? And so like, just knowing that like your kids are so perceptive to everything that you think they're not. And so like you learning to like accept yourself as you are through the through the changes that you're experiencing in life is like so critical because they're picking up on all those details and it's not easy, right? Like it's, as we change, like we're being thrown curveballs. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just learning to figure out how to like work with that. Maybe, maybe it's getting a new dress, maybe a new dress will make you feel really special and then mm -hmm. kind of building off of that. Yeah. Um, well, and I think that's such a great point of like kids are totally observing because I, my husband, um, gets ready in a certain way. We all have our like routine. And then I was, had given my son a bath, the two-year-old and he was getting ready, like in the exact same way. It was crazy. <laughs> and it was like a two-year-old, like he's observed that enough times to be doing the same thing. So he's thinking the same thing or something similar, right? Like this is what we do. Yeah. And so if we're critical of ourselves in front of our kids, I mean, just generally, we shouldn't be critical of ourselves. Like if there's areas for growth, like viewing them in that, like I'd like to focus on this thing, whatever it is, like, and then focusing on a positive reframe or like, I'm really proud of how I tried, but I think, you know, we also sometimes need to share with our kids. Like sometimes I struggle too, because I think sometimes as our kids, especially get into the teenage years, they feel like we being an adult is so easy and we've got it all figured out. But as adults, I mean, maybe I'm not doing this correctly, but it's hard. It's like being really a, hard. a grown up is really hard and yeah. also being a parent. And I often am saying to my kids, like, I'm just one mommy, right? Because it's like, I want to be able to get all the things they want done or whatever yeah. that it's like, I just am one human. So like, let's give each other some grace, right? Yes. And I love that. about how we're navigating through that part. But I think we don't have to be perfect. Right. And when we do something that isn't perfect or we recognize like, Oh, I didn't like how that came out or I'm not proud of myself for saying that in front of you or whatever, then we can go back and say like, you know, I'm working to love myself and this self-love journey is, is, a, is a lifetime. Right. And so we are, you know, like when I was young, this is how it was. And now it's like this and that's hard for me or when now I like this better and this part is harder. I mean, being a mom, my body has changed so much and it's like beautiful and mm -hmm. also hard, right? Because it's uh -huh. like you just change and there, you can't undo that part. You're just going to be different, but you can be a, a better version of yourself. Like you can keep growing, right. To yeah. accept those things. Right. Like there are parts of things that I'm like, that's just how it is. Right. Like this is just how it is. And I'm yeah. okay with that. But then there's mm -hmm. other things where it's like, I want to like tone my stomach more. I'm not looking for a sick pack. I, but, but yeah. just be more strong. Right. But it's like, but it's also like we can incorporate our kids in that and having a healthy version, but it is hard. So I think modeling it though is the best way our kids learn, right? Whether it's speech, like you said, eating, right? Yeah. Or behavior, right? And our kids are watching us for those yeah. examples. So just being conscious of that. Yeah, well, so what advice do you specifically have for teens around self-love? So if you could talk to the teens out there and say something to them, what would you want them to know about self-love? Yeah, for sure. I think there's like real good like activities that you can do like in, you know, maybe however often that you feel like you want to do it, but we were talking about journaling. And so even if it's just to yourself, I would say like, you know, first focus on the inward, write down a few things that you love about yourself internally. Maybe you're a great friend. Maybe you love school and you're really good at it. Like maybe like you're an awesome big brother, whatever it is that you feel like internally or really great qualities like your your hard working like whatever it is write those few things down and then move on to like the outward appearance write down a few things you love about your appearance today now that may change next year like you know we're changing so rapidly at that stage but you know just really thinking about what it is that that you like about yourself and like channeling that positivity and then number three being brave enough to also be honest with yourself about the things that maybe you don't like about yourself visually or internally and like writing those things down 
And then if you can, with the visual things that are about yourself, tying that to perhaps somebody else that you know, or a content creator or something that you, you know, somebody that does content surrounding that specific feature, finding a positive resource to kind of help change that in your mind about how you actually feel about it and finding some peace there. And then for the internal things that you maybe don't love about yourself, you know, making a little bit of a mini goal or a mini plan of like things that you can do tangibly that are, you know, very small 2% little changes to kind of help you get on track for those things. And redoing this every single year for me has been completely life-changing. I feel like it keeps me like, it's almost like a mood board or a vision board, but a little bit more goal oriented. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I don't meet something or I don't meet criteria, then that's okay too. Like that's okay. But at least I know in my heart that this is something that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like that helps you love yourself over time. Yeah. I love that idea of just like being reflective. It's okay to look at things that you're like, I can grow here or that, you know, maybe appearance wise that you're not loving, but then finding a way to love it and finding content around that. So if you could tell yourself something as a teen that might have changed your life, what would it be? And is there anything that you wish that other people would or would not have said to you as a teen? Oh my gosh, there's so many things. But I think like the main thing that ended up being a really common thread for me is that I didn't really have a ton of friends in school. My closest friends were outside of school or had moved states. Like they were friends that I made in school, but then they may have moved away due to their parents' job or something. And so within school, like I had very few friends throughout the years and very few close friends throughout the years. If, and I feel like, you know, I I did feel like it was a little bit of a reflection on me. Like, why don't I have more friends that are like really great friends that are still in school with me? And I wish somebody had told me that it's not a reflection on you at all. Mm -hmm. And that like, it's okay to not have a ton of friends in school, or it's not a problem to not have like a bunch of friends in Sunday school or something like that. Like it's okay. There are many people that have been through your situation that have like gotten through it and have found really great friends later in life Mm -hmm. or have still been successful. You know, like this isn't your end all, like you're not some sort of loser, you know, like it's, Mm -hmm. this is not a reflection on you and your abilities to do anything in this life. Um, And that like, you know, the best is yet to come and just be like, I, I don't want to say be patient because that really sucks, but I I did feel like, you know, I, I recently heard the story of David Beckham and Victoria Beckham. They Neither of them really had a ton of friends in school either. David Beckham went on to become one of the best footballers of all time, now owns his own football club. Victoria Beckham went on to be Posh Spice and the Spice Girls. And then after that has now like a really amazing um, beauty line that I love shopping from. Like she's some of my favorite like eyeliners. Um, and so I just feel like, you know, there's people like that, but like, it's, it, you're not going to be like a nobody and a loser and a nothing. Like you can still do really, really amazing special things and have really great connections. Like who you are in your friendships in school don't define you. Mm-hmm. And so I really wish somebody who had told me that, um, I think that really would have like changed my feelings about it entirely. And I I just wish that my parents would have had conversations with me about it. Sometimes like I wish that I could have possibly changed schools or Mm -hmm. I could have like, you know, taken a break or maybe done fewer activities with people in school or maybe more play dates with kids in school growing up that I could have developed those friendships. And I just wish we'd workshopped it a little bit more, but we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's a great thought because I do think that it's hard and relationships can be so hard because it's like, who you're around, right? In school, it's great because you have this like huge group, but if the people that are your people are not there, then that can feel very isolating, right? And lonely for sure. And, but I, I think there's good research to support just having one relationship, one friend, it doesn't even have to be a best friend, but a friend, somebody that you feel like you can count on is enough, right? So I think sometimes people don't hear that part of like, you don't have to have a ton of people. One is enough. Now we, we generally want more, right? And that's okay. Right. But, but to be patient, to have those relationships where they're really genuine relationships. So I think that is great advice. Do you think there's um, anything that you wish people would not have said? I wish that there had been fewer comments about my appearance. Like, I think that's just not something that like, we need to like talk about so much like when it's unsolicited especially Mm -hmm. like you know there would be kids that would be like you know you 
you're pretty for an Indian girl. Like if you were just like a white girl, like you'd be a lot prettier. Like your features are fine, but like maybe if you were like different, like it would be better. Or like I would get a lot of comments on like, you know, my height or my body shape and things like that. Um, I used to get comments about my hairy legs and my arms um, a lot. And so like, I just, I kind of just wish that it was a little bit less talked about because they were Yeah. big insecurities for me. And I just think it's like, it's a little bit odd and jarring to like, especially for like a parent of your friend to tell you these things is, is very odd. Mm -hmm. so, so that's kind of what I wish there was a little bit less of. Yeah. Well, and just like being more accepting of just Yeah. like who's in front of you and seeing them as a whole person, right? They are human, right? And you are beautiful. And regardless of whether you have hairy legs and hairy arms, right? As a little kid, but it does matter and it does stick with you. I think that's the part that's hard is, Thanks for you, is yeah. yes, that it, it amplifies, especially if it's something that you're feeling insecure about. And probably if it's something that somebody else might notice, you are probably also noticing it too. Yeah. Or That's, if I wasn't, that's, now I am. yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good thought to end with. Well, thank you so much again for this lovely conversation. It Thank was you so for great having to me back talk again. to you. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll have you on again soon, hopefully. Awesome. That sounds Okay. Thanks again, Slaysha. That was all really helpful. I don't know about you, but I took a lot of things away from this episode. I loved the idea of how important it is for us to model self-love for our kids and also about being patient with them and also teaching them to love both the outside and the inside and how to balance those things. With that, I'll say thank you so much for your time today. Please rate and subscribe to us on your platform that you're listening to. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And also, please continue to send the emails. We are loving the emails that are giving us ideas for future shows to accidentalexperts at gmail.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Some words from our legal team. The information presented in this podcast is not intended or implied to be a substitute for appropriate professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. All content, including text, graphics, images, and information contained on or available through this podcast is for general information purposes only. This podcast makes no representations and assumes no responsibility for the accuracy or information on or available through this podcast. And such information is subject to change without notice. You are encouraged to confirm any information obtained through this program with other sources and review all information regarding any condition or treatment with the appropriate professionals. What we're saying is, yes, I am a real therapist, but I'm not your therapist.